So here we are, uh, summer prep. This is our third class. We're beginning with um, the emotion portion. Come August, we'll shift a little bit to the, a spiritual prep, which I think will be really cool uh, and I think timely. So I won't give any spoilers away about what we'll be doing with that. Um, it will not be a typical spiritual class, whatever that means to any of you. We're not doing Bible study. I'm not going to present the gospel. I'm going to show you guys how to prep your spirit. So that's just a little bit of a, a little advertisement for that. And it will, will have a lot to do with emotions as well. Um, and I shared before I hit record for those of you watching later that things should have shifted for me and Almost like if you guys have ever had, we've all had this. So I, I was going to say, you know how you've had this time zone in your life and it can be a gigantic wake up call. And sometimes it's not necessarily that big of a deal, but all of a sudden nothing major happens. All of a sudden you just sort of like wake up from this sleep. Well, that has been um, what's gone on with me for a little bit. And I don't really want to get super personal and say, oh, this is my stuff and then make this class all about me. I'd rather tell you a story to make a point and not make it about me. I, I try not to do that as much anymore because how dull, right? No, I mean, really, <laughs> it is not the Jen Weir show. Um, I simply share things that God has walked me through over the last, I don't know, how old am I, 49 years? What works, what doesn't work, and hopefully you guys can learn from it. So here's what happened. Um, Actually, two things, write this down and we're gonna talk about this in depth. And this is, is really the crux of everything, okay? So we react with our emotions. We respond with our intellect. If somebody had said that to me uh, three years ago, I would have probably come unglued and like, oh, well, emotions are not bad. They can be intellectual, which probably would have read my mail that, you know, had some emotion issues. There's so much truth to that. And so what I want you guys to take away really more than anything, anything in the whole wide world from any time I talk about emotions is learn how to respond, learn how to stop reacting. If you can do this, I promise you, you will be on a fast track to walking in the calling and the gifts that God has placed in you, whether you know the same God that I do or not, that does not matter. I talk to people all day long, every day who don't know the same God as I do. And this, the truths are still the same. We are put on this earth. We have a purpose and a calling. And I'm 1000% convinced that if you are not doing any of, if you're not doing what you're supposed to, it's because of negative emotions. I am 100,000, 10, 20% convinced that weight issues are tied to your emotions solely. Now, you all, people can argue with me all the live long day, and it could be thyroid, it could be this, it could be that physical. And I will tell you, those physical things got that way because of emotions. I know this firsthand now. I was a hairdresser for, I won't exaggerate because it doesn't help anybody, but for 25 years, I had to do the math. I'm like, wait, I always say hundred years, but it was really only 25. Um, and I saw people's hair. I saw, I read their mail. Your hair, skin and nails will tattle on you about what's going on on your emotional side. That's just that. I say that I've had a front row seat to this because in since 2020, I have gained 25 pounds. I am not a woman who struggles with weight. Not now, not ever. It's just not in my DNA. Well, it is my, my family. I come from a long line of women who've done various diets and, um, my grandparent, my grandmother put my mom and my aunt, you know, on diet pills. Like when they were young, you know, just, if you grew up in the sixties, seventies, right. Diet pills are a big thing. Um, in any case, so, but for me, that just wasn't in my DNA until 2020. And I thought it was because of my husband dying. And I realized like, oh no, I started gaining weight then. I just didn't think about it. And after Mark passed, now my pants are getting a little snuggly. And apparently the scale at our gym is broken. I don't know if you guys have been on these. It's horrible. I'm like, can you please 
by a scale that works. This is so obnoxious. In any case, uh, I texted my friend. I was like, oh my gosh, Joanna, the scale at the gym is broken. She's like, I hate it when that happens. And I needed someone to sympathize. But the truth of the matter is um, I eat because I was sad. I eat because I was in grief and I wasn't choosing foods that were healthy. I'm somebody who loves carrots. It's weird. We, I, my family, we don't like kale. We eat kale because kale is good for us. We think it's like the steak of for vegetarians and vegans. You just don't know when you're done chewing, but I eat it and I'm, I am happy with it. And in the last, what is it going on now? 11 months that has not been my story. I'm craving things that are gonna be a quick fix, a quick feel good. And the broken scale of the gym is reflecting that and so are my tight pants. And I share all of that to let you know, I've been studying emotions for seven years. I've been teaching them for about six. I've always said to anybody who will listen to me for five seconds, emotional healing is the key to incredible physical health and spiritual health. Please hear me. Your spiritual health, how you relate to your creator is so like this with your emotional health. So is your physical health. I've said that forever. Your any exceptional emotional health is the missing link for all business growth, all goal setting, anything like that. I know this, and this isn't a business class, but you all know Young Living is one of my businesses. My Young Living business has totally tanked in the last year and a half. I'm not, I don't blame 2020 or none of that. People, you can, if you want, that's not where I go. I have to hold up a mirror and go, hmm, it's me, right? I, I'm the problem. For sure. For sure. And that's never not been an issue, but why I share this with you is so that anybody who has goals, anyone who is trying to do something, whether it's in your work, your um, business, if you have your own business, whatever you do, exceptional emotional health is the key. I have a lot of friends in a lot of different MLMs. And I love that we are grown up enough to be able to talk about each other's businesses and encourage each other and not compete. My aunt, she and I are um, super, super close and she's super big into plexus. Like she's high up in plexus. And so we talk about it. We encourage each other in that. And we were actually having a conversation today and we were both like, yeah, it's mindset. It's key. And, and she, we were talking about different people that speak at our conventions and people that we listen to for our business building tips. And I'm like, you know what? Here's the deal. All those people can say all the blah, blah, whatever they want. Do this social, what do they call it now? Social selling. I'm like, is that the keyword we're doing? Um, whatever. All of it is utter rubbish and will do you no good if your emotions are not exceptional and on point. We spend thousands of dollars on coaching, self-help, all this stuff. And it's all for the exterior, right? The external. And if we would just take a fraction of that, those resources and turn it inward, as you all are doing right now, it's a fast track to whatever it is you need to do. So I'll tell you just a quick story so you know where I've come from. I realize I have not shared... Um, maybe Trish, maybe Tony. Um, but I don't share a lot about what happened to us in Massachusetts. And I didn't realize that even my own family didn't know how we ended up adopting two total strangers. Um, I thought I did. In any case, to make a very long story short, we were having a lot of open mic nights at the house, lots and lots and lots of people. And the state of Massachusetts did not take kindly to having large gatherings. Um, when they were fining people for having more than 100 people outside, we ended up having one gathering that, oh my word, I think there was probably 200 people at the end of it, the last count. Um, not only that, there were gang members that had gotten invited. It was a gathering that got out of control. Um, 
so there's a lot of gang members and they they didn't do anything ugly it was just there was a lot of people in the neighborhood that didn't enjoy that so they called the police and they were reporting us to city council and they were reporting us to the state and on and on it went and i was all of a sudden gripped with fear all of my mindset and emotion stuff about seeing it the way I wanted and envisioning the goal and why we were there just completely right out the window. Because I was afraid that this state could come in and take my home, which they can do unannounced in the state of Massachusetts. And I was really concerned that they would take my children because that was the propaganda that was being pushed around social media. Stupidly, I believed all the crap that I watched on social media and it created a ton of fear. I even asked them what I thought were trustworthy friends, just like, hey, this is what's going on. What would you do? And one woman said, uh, I don't even remember how she put it, but basically like um, safety, like may just go get to safety for your kid's sake. She perpetuated that fear in me. I let her, excuse me, I should not blame her, forgive me. And so I just bought into that. A friend of mine said, you know, well, you guys should move to where you can just put down roots, um, raise your kids, and then just share the gospel. And I was like, okay, well, I guess, you know, and just on and on and on and on. It just went. I had no support. Um, everybody wanted us to get out of there because it was scary. And about three months when we got back, Mark and I looked at each other. We're like, we made a huge mistake. That was so stupid. And we were grieved. We were super grieved about what we, what the loss of that, the loss of this, anyway, ministry, all the things that we were doing there, the loss of these kids that we were pouring into, gang members calling me mom. They had fancy ankle bracelets that were government issued, if you know what I mean. And they were just dear. I, I love them so very much. So you have that grief. And then my husband um, was real sick, didn't share because I don't know why. This side of heaven, I will probably never know. Um, and then he died, as you all know. And so you have this, like this loss of that, and then the loss of a spouse, and there it goes. And I started aligning with negative things in my life. Everything felt bad. Everything felt ugly. And I know some of you guys can relate to what I'm saying. That's why I'm sharing this story with you. I teach emotions. I tell my kids, I'm like, guys, I teach this all the time. What is my problem? And it would be so frustrating because I know truth. And yet it was difficult to get there. And the reason it was difficult, I mean, you guys, I literally have two Bibles sitting on my desk right now. Come on. I know this stuff. Just because you know, the word of God does not mean that you're going to be like Johnny on the spot and emotionally healthy and strong. I'm done with platitudes and anecdotes. They're just, again, total trash to me. The thing is, is that there is one scripture that I've hung on to and it is, where is my card? I had it right here in front of me. Isn't that, isn't that ironic? Um, it's about renewing your mind, not being conformed to the pattern of this world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it hit me recently that my mind had not been renewed and my words followed suit and then consequently so did my actions. So I want to ask you all, where are you? You don't have to answer. Thank you, Trish. Romans 12, 1 through 2. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. You don't have to answer in the chat if you don't want, but I'd love for you to take a piece of paper and, and do like a self-assessment. Where are you? Where are you mentally? Maybe you're in here because you just want some more um, emotion, like healthy emotional tips and ways to just improve. That is phenomenal. And I'm so proud of you. If you are in a good place emotionally and you just want to brush up, clean up, what a fabulous thing to do for yourself, prepping for the next season ahead. But if you're like me, I swear to you all, if one more thing were to happen in my life, I probably would be like, that is it. I'm moving to Montana. I'm going off the grid. I don't even, I don't know what to tell you. Like it was like that, right? You're at a crossroads. And if you're with me on that crossroads, <laughs> welcome. You're in a good place. There's nowhere else to go, but up, right? So do a self-assessment. Where are you? 
In emotional healing, prepping for an increase in positive emotions, we must at times go back to the basics. Today, when I was chatting with my aunt about emotions and we were talking about this type of things and, and business, really, I said, Wendy, I feel like a triathlete that now has to go back and remember how to learn to run. Right? If you've ever, um, I, I love using running analogies and I, I laugh because I'm like, I only have a handful of runners for friends, <laughs> right? Trish, I'm just, I'm like, right? <laughs> You, you run your stuff. Okay, Torch. We, I, I love running. And one day I will run a triathlon. One day I will run a marathon. And it's funny, as I said, I'm like, where did that dream go? Ah, I have so much work to do. In any case, um, if you've done that, that's kind of a, a pinnacle. If, you've, if you're a runner doing a marathon, let's say. But if you've been on that mountain of running in that level and you have to go back and start over in the beginning, how do you begin? At some point or another, every one of us on this call and everyone watching later was at a pinnacle, a peak of emotional wellness. No one comes into this world depressed, hurt, broken, and all of that, bruised and battered. Most, most people have that happen through their life, more people than that, if they have emotional challenges, it happens in adulthood. So we go back, we learn. So tonight we're going to go back to basics. The first thing that you want to do is you must recognize a need for healing, for change, etc. Whatever the need is, you have to just recognize it and say, okay, um, I'm not where I want to be. So there's a, there's a need, maybe you're on your way. Maybe you're not getting there as quickly. Just recognize there's something that needs to shift. It could be huge. It could be small, but what is that? Is it an AA? I, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but have, you know, recognizing that there's a problem is half the battle. We must have a goal and keep it on the forefront of our minds. Hmm. Yeah. You have to keep it on the forefront of your mind. Where do you want to go? You know, we all have smartphones now. I don't know anybody except for my biological father that doesn't have a smartphone. He lives out in the, whatever, in the backwoods in Mon or not Montana, Utah, and has no need for any of that. But for most of us, we have these smartphones. And if we want to go somewhere that we've never been before, we put in the GPS and hopefully Siri gets it right. And hopefully we get there pretty much the end the time and whatever she says. And sometimes she's a little off and who are you? Um, but we all do this, right? If I'm going to go to, let's say, Deb's house, I've never been to Deb's house. She's going to give me the address and I'm going to trust this little thing is going to tell me how to get there ish, right? Here we are in our lives, we don't have a clear direction. When it comes to goal setting, especially with our emotional health, we don't have a GPS to plug in. We don't see the end from the beginning. But here's the thing, we have a creator who does. The word of God says in Psalm 139 that before any of our days came to be, every one of them were written in a book. There's something written about us. Don't you guys want to know what it says? Don't you want to keep going on that path? My son, my 16-year-old is applying for a job because I quickly realized that mm, a 16-year-old in the summer without a job is just no bueno. It's not a good idea. He needs to be busy. So he's looking for a job and he applied. Um, thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. Psalm 139, verse 16. He applied it in and out. You guys, if you love in and out, you're welcome. We prayed for it to come. And here we are. All the Californians said, amen. Um, my son went on an interview. They decided, hey, he thought it went well. They didn't give him the job. He was devastated. I said, honey, you are 16. You can go on a thousand interviews and it doesn't matter. The idea is it's, it's getting experience. 
you know you want a job, that's the end goal, that's the finish line. But I said to him, and this is for all of you, we will be talking about paths and um, purposes and callings. It's something I'm deeply passionate about, but I don't talk about it enough. And I have a lot of people asking, how do I do? I, I don't even know my calling. And it, it grieves me because if we actually sat down face to face for 30 minutes, I could have a whole plan mapped out for you, just knowing who you are and pouring in and asking you. But in any case, I said to my son, here's the deal. If you get a job that's not part of your book, it's a good job, but it is a God job. You have to ask yourself that question. In and out would be super fun, but is that where you're meant to be? There is truth to that. Even at 16. And so we want to know, we want to discover. And sometimes we're meant to knock on some doors and just try some things on. It's kind of like knowing you need a dress for a, a night out or a gala or something. So you have to try on the different dresses or outfits to see like, hey, does this fit? What is this? It's totally respectable, but you'll know when you know it's the right one. So that's where we are here as we set goals. Hey, Jen. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's just like um, at a church, you know, some of us have attended in the past um, when they were, they wanted to make sure everybody went through and discovered their spiritual gifts, mm -hmm. but not only that, to discover your passion. Yes. So you knew where to serve in the, in the church. And if you weren't serving somewhere that was fulfilling that, then you really kind of needed to move on. I mean, you could have served, but you know, it was about making sure your spirit was being fed appropriately. That's awesome. I remember that. Yeah, that's good. That is good. And, and on that side of it, thinking about, you know, you go from like, let's say church up into business or any of that. If you're doing a job or a role that you are not designed for, you're actually taking up somebody else's job that they were designed for. Um, I've shared with my children on a number of occasions, if you, I don't know, let's say work at Baskin Robbins, you can tell I'm a little, I'm a little hungry tonight. Um, you work at Baskin Robbins, so I'm not eating the stuff I'm, I'm thinking about all the time. Um, you work at Baskin Robbins, but what if somebody else was actually, that was part of their calling and their passion? Well, now you've just taken their job. That kind of stuff happens all the time because we, we <laughs> thank you, Lisa, ice cream. We, we think about making a living, we lose sight of making a life, right? Okay, so you all have, I think, I'm pretty sure everyone on here and probably watching later has been in one of my emotion classes or read a blog article and or a post from me. So spoiler alert, I'm gonna tell you the number one thing we need to do, the number one thing, the number one thing is breathe. Breathe. This is how, remember, we're going back to how do we respond versus how do we react. Once you get these key things down in our next session, we'll talk about how to either remove blocked, trapped emotions, how to welcome in positive new things. But these are, again, we are going to basics, friends. So I'm not going to invest in time for us to learn how to breathe. We all know how to do that. You can go on my YouTube channel and right on, when you click on my channel, there's a whole 20 minute little deal on how to breathe. Super simple. And I think you can find sporadic ones in there. The second thing is journaling. Journaling is key. I think I shared last time, and I feel like it was in this group, that in Young Living, if you use Young Living oils, you should be journaling all the time as well, because the only reason why you have any new blends since Gary Young passed is because he kept a good journal. He kept good notes. It doesn't have to be fancy. It can be just a, a little spiral book, just your notes and thoughts. That's it. When you journal, especially if you're healing in your emotions, it keeps you on track. What you get to see is you write down your thoughts for the day, a brain dump, maybe five, 10 minute brain dump. Um, 
maybe you're just hashing some things out in your mind, but you can set it down and look at it and sit back and go, hmm, you can see it for what it is and what it is not. There are so many times that I have journaled and I'm like, what in the, what is in my head today? Oh my word. No, 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 no. And I can course correct just by doing that. For me personally, I'll journal and I have conversations with the Lord. That's just how he works with me. So I'll journal and all of a sudden I'll start writing stuff. I'm like, that is not my thought. That's a good thought. And it's just for me. And I say this several times with anybody who will listen that one of the biggest drawbacks to journaling is people get concerned. What if we, I die and someone finds my stuff? Great. Do you know what a blessing and a legacy you leave? My husband has left hundreds, literally hundreds of little notes for my children, little prayers he wrote for them and in his own journal. We still have a piece of him here. And if you don't, if you don't journal because you don't like your handwriting, well, I feel like we should work on some of that self-talk then. Let's get to that too. So journaling is just, I say it all the time. I, I can't say it enough. The third thing you're going to need is essential oils. Essential oils are a fast track to good emotional health, to exceptional emotional health. You don't have to. We all know if we're in a situation, and as Deb shared just a moment ago in the chat, <laughs> you heard me saying, Deb, just breathe. I just grabbed that. I'm, that's funny. Yes, Deb, just breathe for real. If you're in a situation and you need to breathe and you don't have your oils, well, yes, of course, breathing is going to be just fine and that will help. But when you are working on exceptional emotional health, when you are working on goal setting, when you are working to reduce your weight, shape your physique in the way that it was designed to be, hear me. I didn't say reduce it in a way that you want, that the media tells you to be. It's in the way that you were designed to be. Your oils will help. Let me just say something about body shapes and types for just a second, please. I am five foot 11. My body is designed to be long and lean. That is just how God made me. I had a grandma who was five feet tall, maybe on her best day. There was a picture my mom texted me today. She's like, oh my gosh, I forgot how short your grandmother was. It was my, it's my, it was my dad's mom. And she was so tiny, but she was a plump little thing. And she, I remember she was always doing Weight Watchers, drinking Diet Tab. Does anyone remember Diet Tab? It's nasty. It tastes like, like I can feel it on my teeth right now. I was like, Bleh. Anyway, she's always drinking something diet. But she wouldn't have been my grandma if she was long and lean. She was just like the squatty little thing. She's like, well, God just cut me off at the knees. I'm just so short. And that was, you know, that's how she would talk. And I cracked up because of it was her shape. So ladies, as you look in the mirror and we work together on emotional health and wellness and get back to exceptional emotional health, your body shape and physique will morph into the way it was designed to be because you will begin to love the, the creation that God, the masterpiece that God made you. All of a sudden, you'll stop thinking about the muffin top or the high Betty arms or whatever we all don't like. And you'll start realizing how wonderful you were created. And then you'll start eating foods to match and, and on and on it goes. It's really quite simple. For the rest of this time, our time together, we're going to talk about strengthening our mind. Life and death, excuse me, I'll say, I think I say that wrong. I believe it's death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat of its fruit. Our mouth is really what shapes our emotional well-being. The words we speak, the thoughts we think are tangible tangible things. If you have oils in front of you, I'm just choosing mine. Uh, I would highly recommend you put them on so that you can make a connection to what we're about to discuss. 
your thoughts generate your words. Your thoughts, it really Trish, any oils. Uh, thank you for asking. So I would say something that you really enjoy, something that you like that anchors you. I honestly, um, I pulled these out today, Roots and Wings. It's, I don't always, I, you know, I still have convention oils. I don't always use up the conventional oils that we have. These, I will probably be buying, putting it on my monthly order because I don't know how many of you have tried Roots and Wings um, from Young Living, but this, I, I don't even know, I don't have words to describe it. I'm sorry, this isn't an oil class, although it kind of is. I, I don't have words for it, to be perfectly honest, but this Roots oil has, has been, um, I'll just say everything. The Wings, to me, Wings is exceptional. These are two of my new favorite oils and, oops, well done, Deb. That's awesome. Uh, they have all the oils that will help your brain. So, okay. Side note on oils. If you are looking for, what do I need? Do I need the feelings collection? Do I need the freedom collection? Do I need this? You know, for now I'd say, why don't you do yourself a favor and get some roots and wings and just, I don't know, just play around with it. It's, they're pretty amazing. Okay, so as you grab your oils, start breathing them in, do your breath work as I'm talking, start journaling, making some notes. When you use your oils, or the reason, or the other reason why I have you use your oils is because immediately it changes your brain. The oils start to go to work on your thoughts. You I don't have to say absolutes very much, but no, okay. Somebody, if, if it doesn't resonate with you, it doesn't. You would be hard pressed to use an, an essential oil and not have an emotion immediately rise up, whether it's good or bad. For example, lemongrass used to send me over the edge. I'm like, lemongrass, come on now. Well, guess what emotion lemongrass is tied to? Resentment. Hmm. It's kind of pesky. Lavender, not my favorite. Lavender is tied to abandonment, sort of happens. You tend to have those emotions when your father chooses the military over being a dad, right? You kind of have these things to work through. Now, those are two of my favorite oils. So as you breathe in your oils, especially if you're using one that's it, that you just love, and as a friend would say before, you just want to crawl in the bottle, right? You just If you could just be wrapped in that aroma, these are the oils that we want to use for now because this, as we talk about emotions and we start stepping gingerly into dealing with some of the negative stuff, if we have an oil that we are loving and we can smell it, that will help set aside those, that negative feeling, we can tap into something more positive and life-giving all while dealing with the negative. Just a quick review for those of you who maybe haven't done an emotion class with me or we haven't really talked about the brain very much. Did you know that your brain generates 70,000 thoughts-ish per day? It feels like a lot of thoughts, but if you think about it, pun intended, it's really not that hard to do. Most people are really only able and aware of 10% of those thoughts. If someone, if fear is something someone is plagued by, let's say, chances are you're thinking about fearful things and you're allowing fearful thoughts to ruminate in the mind. Now I'm going to meddle. I'm going to be a mom for just a second. I've done it five times, actually seven, because I have my two other kids, um, so I'll be a mom. Just, so just think of me as just this, you know, fussy, fussy lady, just getting in your face for a second. Um, ladies, whatever TV shows and movies you are watching, whether you like it or not, it will stick in your brain. I got in a crap ton of trouble. I say that jokingly because I love it when I get in trouble on Facebook. I'm like, you, what, what, you're just going to be mad? Is that all? Oh, okay. Well, we can move on, can't we? A while back, I wrote an article about, um, oh, what the heck is that show? This is us. This, this is us. Did you, how did you know I was going to say that? 
Because I've never seen an episode either. <laughs> I, so, I remember your post. But that is funny. So I was watching all these people be like, oh my gosh, did you see it? It was, and the words they were using, it was heartbreaking, heart-wrenching. It killed me. These words people were saying, I'm like, oh my gosh, why are you guys talking? Stop. Why are you watching a show that is heartbreaking, heart-wrenching, and it kills you? This is before 2020, and I'm like, astounded. I had been well knee deep into, you know, emotional stuff. And I'm like, what? Okay, I, I need to help these people. <laughs> Come, everybody. So I wrote this article about this. And, and you know, I'm a little softer now. I've been through the the world has run me through the ringer. So I kind of, you know, have had to soften up just a touch. So probably my words weren't as nice as they could have been. However, they were poignant. You'd have thought half these people wrote the show, were making money off the show. And I said, you know what? And your grandmother's ugly. Like the, the backlash that I got from meddling and poking my finger, I'm like, hey, here's a mirror. All of you whose life looks like a train wreck and you're also watching this show. How about maybe you just don't watch that show anymore? It's just a thought. Just, okay, shoot the messenger if you need to. So I share that now fully convinced and standing firmly on that thought that the TV shows we watch, the movies we let ourselves watch, they actually can affect the rest of your life. The other side of that is whatever we watch, listen to, read it plays out in our life we start reacting and we don't even know it you all know it's called programming for a reason right i'm a word watcher words are huge to me so lisa i'm glad that you said which is why you listen to praise and worship music listen more carefully some praise and worship music, I'm broken, I'm hurting, I'm desperate. This is not honoring to our God or his creation. Be careful. Be careful. We want life-giving things only and always, especially if you are working towards exceptional emotional health. We have a God-given gift of our imagination, and we have the freedom to choose to use our imagination in any way we want. So if we choose truth, beauty, and goodness, we will step into more of that. We just will. If we allow things to ruminate in our mind, that life, truth, beauty, goodness, we'll see more of that self-fulfilling prophecies. Guard your heart with all diligence for from it flows the, the springs of life or in other words, the Hebrew says the seasons of your life. What we think about produces the next season in our life, hence the idea behind summer prep. What we're doing now will create the next season in our life, whatever we want. So I used to teach a lot about affirmations and still do to some extent, though they tend to get a little wonky. You know, um, we, sometimes we slip back into the Stuart Small, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and gosh darn it, people like me. And it, it's like, it doesn't feel right in our, in our body, in our soul. It's like, that does, what, what is that? There's, there was a, I, I, hmm, hold on, let me think. The term I am worthy, I am enough is now a brand. Um, in the city that I live in, there's a mall and I walked by and I was like, the heck? There's this whole brand called I'm worthy. I'm like, you're making money off of telling folks they're 
Okay. I get it. I get it. It's a t-shirt. It's, you know, anytime I start to see tchotchkes and I call it Jesus junk, I'm like, well, now it's just a business. Now you've turned something that was sacred into something that was profane instead of speaking life. So now someone buys a t-shirt to show that they are worthy instead of actually maybe believing it is my point. Nothing against since they're wearing a t-shirt. It's just that um, it becomes now a platitude and a little anecdote or a meme. So what I'd like to do is, is start a new trend and let's take affirmations and kick it up a notch and, and not even say speak life, but really uh, speak truth. Yeah, Sherry, that's great. I decree I only see myself as God sees me. Excellent place to begin. So I'm going to piggyback off of Sherry and have you ask yourself the question, how does he see you? If you were to sit with your creator and say, how do you see me? What does he say? If you don't know, well, there's your homework. What does he say about you? The root word for affirmation, again, I told you all I'm a wordy. My children are studying a bunch of languages because number one, it's super fun. But number two, my goodness, we are so multicultural in our world today. But the root word is affirmare, and that means to strengthen and to make steady. So you can download apps that give you affirmations. And again, that can be just a little anecdote if it's not coming from your spirit. We are a spirit. We have a soul. We're in a body. This is why we start off with the body. We're in the soul portion. Now we're going to end with the spirit in August. Heather, I love that. Of course he does enjoy you. Yes. So when we lift weights for our brain muscles, so to speak, we want to create affirmations that are for us, from us, from our spirit, from the one who created us, not from the outside, somebody else telling us what a good affirmation is. I've had affirmations over the years about my business. You know, I have a thriving, prosperous business, this kind of thing. And while that is good, really affirmations are, hmm, their best, best practice. This is just not, this is the world according to Jen Weir. Best practice from what I've seen from the people that I've coached is really more things that will help the soul that come from the spirit. The body just kind of goes along for the ride, right? Hence my uh, overindulging on ice cream and all things sweets. My body was like, bring it, love it. Just give me more of that. My soul is like, give me, give me, I'm so sad. And my spirit's probably going, what the, everybody, pay attention, right? So if we can get things from the spirit that speak to the soul, that encourage the soul to do the right thing, to walk in the path that it was designed to, the body just automatically does its thing. Affirmations are a form of auto-suggestion. When they're practiced deliberately and repeatedly, they reinforce chemical pathways in the brain, strengthens those neural connections. Those neurons then begin to fire together and they grow new pathways. As we're talking, this is why I had you all put on oils. Doing these types of things again and again will help strengthen those neural pathways. In addition, affirmations will detox our thoughts and restructure, restructure the dynamic of our brain so that we begin to think in the way that we were designed to think. If you all can remember, you are a spirit, you have a soul, you're in a body, and you remember that you are a spirit First and foremost, how would your spirit think? And then you can begin to detox any clutter, anything that's not serving you. Just pausing on that thought for a moment and going back to journaling, this is why journaling is so powerful. Because now you're able to journal and if there's a thought that 
we'll talk about this in a moment, but that just doesn't feel right. You feel uh, a little off in your body. Well, that's a, probably a negative thought and it's not life-giving. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Could also say power in, well, it's anyway, in the body and then in the mind. So then you can go back and say, well, wait a second. What's a thought that's truth, that has beauty, that's filled with goodness? And then you can begin to rewrite that or rethink that and see where you need to course correct. Again, if I'm going to Deb's house and I decide to get off the highway because I need gas and a break or something from driving, what if I turn the other way, oh, well, now my GPS would be like, hey, sister, you got to go back. It happens in emotional healing. So what I'm doing right now, I'm course correcting. My GPS is way off. So it's like, oh, okay, let's get back on the path. What are some things I'm thinking that aren't correct? And I can't tell you all what is right and what is wrong. It's really only for you to decide. But I can tell you truth, beauty, and goodness are really good plumb lines to begin with. When we verbally affirm our dreams, our desires, our positive emotions, and our ambitions, we are instantly empowered with a deep sense of reassurance that our wishful words are going to become and are becoming reality. Going to exceptional emotional health. If you are someone that says, I am seeking and I desire to have peace in all situations, I want to be firmly rooted and grounded in God's love so that when I'm in any situation, that love just spills out of me. These are things that we may want. I'm just, I'm actually speaking for myself. So as I say that, it just, it seals the deal more. Even on a, on a physical if you, have, if you have a physical goal, let's say you want to shape up, you want to shake the cobwebs off, there's an emotional reason behind that, right? So if you, well, I don't like what I see when I look in the mirror. Well, why? Why? I, I love asking the question. I'm like a three-year-old. Why? 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 And once I, if I ask enough why questions, inevitably the person breaks like, ah, because of this, you know, and then they start, oh, good. Now we can get somewhere. Ask yourself why questions until you get the answer. Once we verbally affirm who we are called to be, who we are created to be, we begin to see ourselves as the one who created us. Just to use Heather's example of what God sees when he looks at her, he says he's happy to be with me. If Heather didn't fully believe that, then she needs to say that. I'm just talking about you like you're not here, Heather. But right, that's any of us. If we hear that, and then we're like, wait, was that my voice or hit? Like, okay, if it's positive, chances are it's your creator. Here's my caveat. When you are choosing your affirmations, it must be rooted in truth. I don't know of any better way to discover that truth than asking the one who created all truths. There's a catchy little phrase that's gone around for a while. Oh, there's your truth. There's my truth. I'm like, no, no, there's the truth. That's just, that's just it. Because your truth changes, my truth changes. The truth never changes. It's just like science. You know, I found it interesting as someone who's homeschooled forever now, it feels like, um, you know, a couple of years ago when science and all this was being bantered about, I'm like, that's funny because good science is the search that actually the definition of good science is the constant search for, for truth, the constant search for how creation works. It's a constant search of something that tends to change a lot not the truth, but the science. So where we used to tell people that smoking was really good for them and 
well, see, that was bad. We realized it was, there's a problem there. When we used to tell people that low fat diets were really good, we saw that we were loading everybody up with sugar. Well, see, that had to change. See, so these things can, can shift and alter. In my own life, there might've been things that I told myself affirmations wise that would help me be motivated and all this, but, but here's the thing. My life has dramatically changed. I'm a single mom now. I still have a couple of kids to finish up, right? Right, Kathy and bad fats. <laughs> My goodness, our brains were shrinking from the lack of fat. So our lives change and our, our truths should never change. My point of sharing that is that if you have an affirmation that is rooted and grounded in truth, no matter what your outside circumstances are, your affirmation will never change. It will constantly put your vision before you so that you're able to continue on the path that you're meant to be on. Will there be times that you have to pause? Like in my case, 100%. Losing your partner in life, is, it's kind of a big deal and you have to figure out what are we doing with what's happening? Unfortunately, with my person, I'm like, yeah, let's get to that part like on week one. Well, that takes some time. But if you have truth rooted and grounded in you, even if you take a season of stepping back, you'll always be pulled into the path that you're supposed to be on. Even soldiers in the military have to go on leave. Missionaries go on furlough. Everybody takes a break but they never lose sight of that vision. For today's task and for this week, remember I mentioned we will be doing this type of class from now for every Monday, every Monday evening, unless, I don't know, it's on one of my kids' birthdays, but I think I checked the calendar and no one has a birthday on a Monday from here on out, I think till next year. But for this week, I'd love for you to have an oil like cedar wood. You guys know it's one of my favorites. It changes the brain. It's so, it's so simple. If you don't have cedar wood, um, frankincense would be a great one. Sandalwood, one of those three, preferably cedar wood, that is my fave. And you'll wanna have a few drops in your hand and use it as a practice to inhale in your diffuser or in your hand rather every day as you speak out life over yourself. Believe. Oh, believe is a great one. Yes, Heather. Thank you for sharing that one. And as you journal this week, breathe in your oil, think about the most pressing emotion that is not serving you right now. We all have something I mean, that's one of the best things about Stu being alive is that there's always something to work on. You'll never hear me say, oh, we're all sinners and we all, no, 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 that's dumb. You're not. You're always striving towards perfection. There might be things you need to work through, but always having something negative. I'm like, why would we think that? So as you're thinking about the most pressing emotion that you have, the one that's not serving you, the one that if it was healed and it was the opposite or whatever, you would feel like a miracle occurred, begin to journal what, where that emotion came from. What, what was the first time you felt that way? Are you something really dramatic like, let's say despair. Let's say you're like, you know, I just feel like I'm in despair all the time. Well, when was the first time you felt that way? When you sit there with your oil, again, preferably cedar wood, if you sit there and, and think about that, it's like, when is the first time I felt this way and breathe it in asking, asking your soul, because y'all can talk to each other. It'll come up immediately. I promise you. And so begin to journal that out your thoughts around that, the feelings around that. And as you do that, the next thing you'll want to do is use an oil that'll help heal that. 
God is healer always, always, but he also gave, and not, but excuse me. And he gave us our oils to help soothe those wounds, to help rewrite those neural pathways. I think of the oils as like little spackle for, for parts in your brain that need to be healed. So choose an oil. It might be lavender. It might be valor. It might be believe. You might want something like release to help budge those stubborn emotions. Just something breathing that in and choosing not even to let it go. Now, here's, here's a revelation. You guys ready? Let me just drop this bomb on you. This is something I've taught for a long time. And I was like, mm, I need to rewrite all my classes. Um, I used to tell people, and I think we've talked you know, at length in, in this type of field, is a let go of bitterness, let go of anger. Well, here's the thing. If you're holding on to it and you're like letting it go, and you're maybe hanging on to hope and joy and all this, well, now your focus is all over here and you're not focusing on this. Does that make sense how I just explained that to you? So if you're needing to, if you want to release, let's just say bitterness, well, what is the opposite of it? What do you want? If do you want more joy? So let's just focus on joy and then the bitterness will just, there's no room for it. If that didn't make sense, someone asked me, but I think that makes a point, right? If you are, yeah, if you're holding on to one, you're holding on to something that God has for your positive emotion and you go to drop it here and you're like, keep looking at this guy and well, now your focus is still on the negative. Yeah, Jen, it's like taking your focus off God. Exactly. When you're, when you're doing that. So you want to focus on him and his attributes and what's come from him versus what's come from other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Focus on the gain and not the loss. Exactly. Sherry. Yeah, exactly. So that's what you'll want to do this week is just work through this little motion or this little portion. Understand, as, as I shared with you, we're going back to basics. Are your dogs going crazy, Trish? <laughs> Sorry. Get your home. They're, they're looking at us weird. <laughs> yeah, they're like, what's going on that computer? Um, I'm, I'm like, wait, I lost my train of thought with that. We're going back to basics. In the running scenario, this is the equivalent of going and buying some shoes. You know, at the beginning of the year, when anybody does any kind of weight loss program or health regime, they, they buy all of the accoutrements or they, they join the gym, they make this big lofty goal. Me, I just get new shoes. That's literally what I do. I buy new running shoes. I might go for a walk. I might trot from like one stop sign to the other because I know me. I'm a hit it hard kind of person. And then I burn out because I know I haven't dealt with my stuff up here. So we're just going to do some basics and listen, if I've given you too many things, I think we gave you about three or four things tonight. Just do one. There is an idea that I have in homeschool, especially it's really more with our English. We call it easy plus one. Talk about going back to basics. This is something I taught years and years ago. Easy plus one. What's easy for you to do right now? Right now. Then add just one thing. Just one. If what's easy for you is to use your oil, great. Then the next thing is maybe just get a spiral notebook and write truths on the top. You are done. That's it. Maybe the next day, write another truth. And the next day you see it like, don't, you don't have to spend a big, long hour, long journal time. Simple, simple. I want you guys to succeed in this. I really do. I, you guys, I, people watch for a living and I'll end with this. I, as a hairdresser, I was fascinated by humans, really interested in why they do the things they do. And sort of like the definition of insanity. I'd see people complain about doing stuff. I'm like, 
well, why are you still doing that? I don't understand. I was cutting a woman's hair years ago and she would complain about how much football costs. You know, we live in Texas. For those of you who are not familiar with Texas, it is a religion here. There's like the Holy Trinity of Jerry Jones and I don't know, football and something else. I don't know what else, but in any case, um, it was really expensive and they were always short on money. And I said, well, why don't you just, why don't you stop doing football? Again, it was like, I just shot her grandma. I'm like, I'm sorry, you were just complaining. I don't understand why you keep doing this. So I people watch and I've seen social media and it's, you know, it's hot here in Texas, really hot, really hot. Um, gas prices are pretty high. There's a lot of things in this world that are noteworthy and that are rough. Friends, I got news for you. I've read the end of the book. It is not going to get better. And if there's this level of complaining and frustration now, you will not make it. You will not come to the end of your season running your race well. You will be limping over the finish line barely, barely getting it done. I want you guys to succeed. I want us all to be running so strong that it's like a breeze. Our light and momentary afflictions. Can you say that right now? I hope so. If you can't, that's our goal. This is light. This is easy. I, I promise you. Okay, with that, we'll take some questions.